Hi, welcome to this episode of Oracle EPM Cloud Today. I'm your host, Katherine Gastry. Today's guest is Mark Seewald, Senior Director of Product Management for Oracle's EPM Cloud Applications. Mark will be talking with us today about emerging technologies in EPM Cloud. Stay tuned for all that and more on EPM Cloud Today. I'm Catherine Gestry. Welcome to Oracle EPM Cloud today. Hi, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Catherine. Good to see you. Good to see you. So tell me, how is everything in EPM Cloud today? Well, as you know, Catherine, we're very busy. Um, the EPM Cloud is being very successful. We, ha we now have uh, thousands of customers. Uh, keeps us busy, obviously, in the development organization. Uh, we're also uh, approaching a really important milestone. Um, here in uh, February of 2019, we will be have our fifth anniversary being in the EPM Cloud. This is a, an exciting time, a time we should actually ce celebrate, obviously. Um, also, as you know, uh, just a, um, uh, not too long ago, we, we wrapped up uh, Oracle Open World, and Open World is always a, a, a busy time, but it's also a great time to kind of check you know, where we've come from. Uh, I, I love it to see all our customers present and uh, tell their stories passionately about the success they've had with our products. So uh, it, it's a wonderful time, it keeps us busy, and it, it also keeps us kind of um, really pushing forward full speed to make sure we're, we're bringing the best features to our customers. That's a lot of great news, great news. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about what's coming up in the future. So there's a lot of buzz around emerging technology right now. We, we live in a world where there's driverless cars and drone delivery. So what does that mean for the world of finance and the CFO? Yeah, you know what? It's a great question. Uh, there is a lot of uh, emerging technologies that's going to impact you know, not just the enterprise, but obviously society. So that it's exciting. But you know, really laser focused in on um, kind of the impact of uh, to the C office of the CFO to finance in general. You know, I, I think we're we're really excited about the potential. Um, you know, this is these are this gives us an opportunity to to not just make incremental change to our products, but these it, these technologies allow us to really take leaps and bounds uh, in what we can accomplish to really help our customers move the needle and what they're able to do within their finance organizations and more importantly how they can change enterprises and, and be more effective with what they're doing. So we're really excited about it. Um, working hard, we're working on a daily basis um, in the labs looking at these technologies and how they apply to finance. I bet we're going to hear more about some of those technologies but I know there's a lot of buzzwords out there. We've got AI and blockchain, and what of these technologies are really important to the world of finance from an EPM perspective? Yeah, it's a good point, and I, I would differentiate that. You know, obviously all of these technologies have a, enormous potential, um, and there are different parts of Oracle that are working with all of these kinds of technologies, whether it's IoT, you know, Internet of Things, or blockchain, those are going to be important, and, and certainly could have an impact on finance. But from an EPM perspective, uh, um, really the three major technologies that I think uh, will see impact finance um, from the EPM perspective. First off is robotic process automation. Um, robotic process automation uh, really implies uh, any of the automating of a business process that is typically manual today. Um, and you know, really actually we like to use the acronym instead of RPA for robotic process automation, we like to use the acronym intelligent process automation because we think leveraging some of these technologies we can actually um, inject a little bit more, more intelligence to not just automate a rote process, but actually to improve that process, perhaps taking steps out or uh, perhaps finding uh, um, you know, obstacles in, the, in that business process that we can improve on in the future. So uh, enormous potential, particularly in the, in the controller space where you're, you're looking to automate a financial close, but also in, uh, in FP&A around planning and budgeting. Um, second technology is uh, um, uh, machine learning. And really, I, I think has a, the greatest potential. Quite frankly, it's it's an enormous potential, and it's all about taking a look at um, really offering our users and our customers greater insight into their data, and, and, and finding correlations, look automating business processes in ways that uh, you know weren't possible previously. Uh, really, by looking at their data and, and you know making better recommendations as well. So. Can you give an example of that for us? Uh, yeah. So one of the things we're trying to do is uh, uh, is automate um, the insight, what we call insight discovery, and then signal detection as well. So um, really finding patterns in the in our customers' data, uh, reporting them back more uh, dynamically, so they don't have to run reports manually or run ad hoc queries. You know, really find it in more real time. 
Um, and then I think a, a good example of the third type of technology would be um, what we call human interface. Some people might refer to this as a natural language processing or NLP. Um, you know, and I, I think oftentimes when I'll talk to customers, people, you'll think of things like Alexa and Siri or chatbots, and it's, it's hard to imagine how that might impact a, a finance process, a business process, but there absolutely is. You know, on a daily basis, we're working, you know, back in, in, in our labs, working through use cases where we think we can make business processes a little easier, a little bit, le you know, less friction in that business process by um, presenting things to the users in different ways and giving them more choice on how they interact with our software. So you're going to see more benefits for the customers. Can you kind of expand on benefits our customers would see or the office of the CFO? Yeah, you know, I think uh, the benefits uh, clearly is, is around efficiency. Uh, we are trying to flip the ratio of uh, time spent on low value add time, spending more time on that high value add activity. Um, I also think the other major uh, benefit is going to be around uh, finding insights that just weren't, uh, um, you know, easy to spot uh, in, in other situations. So. Uh, and for example, you know, humans are, are pretty good at spotting things like variances and, and trends, but you know, it's a little harder uh, for us to, from, with the visual eye to spot things like correlations. So a, a good example of that might be in uh, planning and budgeting where uh, you know, there might be a little bit of bias in some of the, the plans and budgets uh, that get submitted. So sometimes you might have a hunch about that, but you know, presenting that information uh, back to the users uh, through algorithms, through data science, you know, that's uh, where the opportunity is. This is going to be built into the software. Clearly. Happen automatically to benefit our Well, customers. there's a lot of work that goes into that, yeah. Catherine, as you know. <laughs> but uh, okay. yeah, very clearly uh, that is a part of the, uh, the vision is that we want to have that built directly into the uh, software. Um, so the, the, our finance users don't necessarily have to be experts in data science to take advantage of these. Yeah, they are um, you know, able to take advantage of it just through the normal course of business. So can you tell me a little bit more? You just talked about vision. Can you tell me about Oracle's vision around the emerging technology. Yes, yeah, so we're as a uh, hopefully comes across. You can tell we're super excited about this. Um, you know, we think uh, it, we've been executing on a twenty-year-plus vision on on how we can really impact finance. And traditionally, if you think about what the battle has been against, it's always been a battle against spreadsheet and manual processes. And if you look at the visualization that you see on the screen right now, you'll you'll note that there's um, Traditionally with spreadsheets, you have a lot of your time being spent on areas like um, low value add activities like data reconciliation, ticking and tying numbers, building reports. And you've got a lot of highly skilled, highly compensated, you know, uh, you know, passionate people in finance spending all their time doing really low value add activity like that. So it's, uh, it, it, that's the problem. You know, fast forward to where we are today with EPM, um, we, we look to flip that ratio really reduce the amount of time spent in blue and spend really a lot more time in the value add areas of things like data analysis and taking action on items. And um, importantly, you know, that's, that's, that's able to be accomplished today. But where the huge, huge opportunity for us is, is where we think these technologies allow us to go tomorrow. And I, I think what's interesting here is, is that we'll actually challenge, um, you know, what are, what is truly value add um, activities? You know, if you take a look at the area in yellow, you know, what theoretically would be data analysis, you know, is that truly value add? Yeah, is running lots of reports and doing ad hoc analysis and doing thousands of mouse clicks just to find insights, is that truly value add? And that's our position is it shouldn't be. So we think we have, you know, going forward with what we call intelligent performance management, um, we think uh, we have the opportunity to not just continue lowering that blue area, those very manual tasks, but also lowering what's happening in the, uh, in the yellow area, lowering that data analysis. And um, really what the opportunity is here is, is that it allows finance to start to spend more of their time taking action and, and playing more of an advisory role. Uh, the fact is, is companies aren't getting easier, they aren't getting smaller, they're getting larger, they're getting more complex. So, and, and there's really no part of the enterprise that's better positioned than finance to really play that advisory role with the rest of the enterprise and um, you know, start to take action, solve problems, connect things, find correlations. So, really excited. That's, that's all really exciting news, Mark. Yeah, so what should our customers know about Oracle's vision? Yeah, I think um, you know, when it comes to us executing on this vision, I, I think there's a, a five fundamental elements that um, our customers should be aware of. It's, it's important, it's uh, fundamental to what we're trying to accomplish with the vision. Um, first off is uh, you know, we're trying to leverage our economies of scale here at Oracle. You know, uh, obviously these emerging technologies are huge. There's a lot of investment that needs to go into to making these things uh, um, happen within our software. 
Um, but the great thing is here at Oracle, we have literally hundreds, if not thousands of people working on these kind of technologies. So even though you and myself were a part of a development organization that uh, you know focuses exclusively on finance and, and operational type uh, EPM systems, um, there's other parts of Oracle here that bring an enormous amount of uh, um, intelligence and, and expertise in areas like machine learning, um, chat bots, uh, you know, all these uh, uh, natural language processing, things of that nature. So uh, I think economies of scale is key uh, to allow us to execute quickly. Um, second point I would call out is um, really uh, the concept of application versus platform. You know, it's absolutely our vision to embed these emerging technologies in the application in the context of the business processes. And why that should matter to our customers is, is you know, a customer can certainly go out there and buy a data science platform or a machine learning platform and spend millions of dollars hiring uh, professional consultants to try to build something for them. That's not what we're trying to accomplish. You know, there are platforms out there, even from Oracle, that, that can do that for them. We're trying to take this emerging technology and put it into the business applications in a way that makes it approachable to finance people. So the finance people don't need to be science experts, but they can still take a, a, a advantage of some of that great data science that we're putting into it. So that's important. Um, third point is, is that, yeah, I think uh, we want to try to connect things in, in ways that historically may have not always been easy for finance to connect. Um, and we're calling it really our beyond finance strategy there. Uh, really, I think it's particularly important in the FP&A domain uh, in planning, budgeting, and forecasting. You know, people track their numbers and forecast their numbers all over the enterprise. It's not just an FP&A. And, and really to be able to realize some of the true potential of, of emerging technologies like machine learning, uh, there's a great opportunity to connect the, that operational data with the financial data. It, it, it's enormous, but uh, you know, obviously enabling that is a, a fundamental consideration. Closely related to that is my fourth point, and that really is um, uh, including operational data and third-party data like economic data. Um, things like uh, CPI or PPI or housing starts. You know, again, a, a big opportunity to uh, um, find those correlations, find those signals in the data, and, and allow finance to really be more accurate, more precise with their plans and forecasts. You know, allow the management reporting to be more, more uh, significant, more, you know, more effective. And then last but not least, uh, definitely very, very important here is, is uh, you know, these technologies are new. Um, they're significant. We want to make sure the proper controls and governance are in place around them. Uh, really, really a huge factor here. You know, whether it's the ranking and scoring of the predictions that we're going to report back to our customers, or whether it's always making sure there's transparency around the, uh, uh, the decision making or recommendations that we have. We want the end users to be, you know, in control, in, in the driver's seat, but let the technology enable them. So, you know, in summary, we're, we're super excited. The potential is enormous. The sky's the limit, quite frankly. So again, really happy to, looking forward to bringing this to our customers. That's all really exciting news, Mark. It sounds like our customers have a lot to look forward to in EPM Cloud. So thank you for joining us today. Yep, thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. I hope you'll tune in next time for the next episode of EPM Cloud Today.